number is 30. That's followed by 11. Up next, we have 37. Your next number is 24. Up next is 6. And your final one, you jump up on the number is 43. Good luck. We have wonderful weather to look forward to over the next few days. It'll be sunny, dry, and also getting warmer, especially by Easter Sunday. All the details on those temperatures coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 at 11, housing the homeless. How city leaders are making sure people have a roof over their head. Also ahead, a company looking to invest $185 million in a poultry processing company in Aiken County. We'll have reactions from people living nearby. And it is the last day of the Georgia legislative session. What bills are at the top of lawmakers' priority list? As your news at 11 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJDF News Channel 6 at 11. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thanks so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins tonight with local leaders finding ways to help the homeless population in Augusta. Nikita Dennis is live in the Satellite News Center with more. Nikita? Yeah, the Augusta Richmond County Homeless Task Force says the homeless population is continuing to rise in our area. And members of the task force say their first priority is making sure people have a place to stay. And we make sure that uh, every time a partner has a resource available and we find out about it, we want to get them to be a part of this task force. We want them on these committees because we need their expertise. They're the ones boots on the ground telling us what is needed. Organizations like United Way, Gap Ministries, and others came together Thursday for the Augusta Richmond County Homeless Task Force meeting, hoping to find housing for people seeking shelter. They're looking at different properties throughout the area to serve as homeless facilities. The task force is working on various initiatives for the year to help with shelter, employment, and mental health services. They've also partnered with local institutions to provide mental health resources to improve the care of homeless individuals. Once we have these units available and prepared for the homeless to come in and seek that shelter, we'll also have the services ready for them so that we can really offer them wraparound services and be there for them in a holistic way. Collins says as they work to help find shelter for people in need, the task force is also looking to house foster kids once they turn 18. So we know that there is a, a very large population of foster children in the area. And we know that um, these, these young people, once they turn 18, they're out on their own. And as wonderful as foster parents are, there's only so much that they can do and give. It's not certain when the facilities will be ready to house people, but they're working as quickly as possible. Live in the Satellite News Center, Nikita Dennis, WJBF News Channel 6. It is time now for a first check of the forecast. Here's meteorologist Jenna Petracci. Well, it was a beautiful sunny day. We also had some warm temperatures, made it into the 70s, and 70s will be back for our Friday. In the meantime, it will be a chilly night, though. Here's a live look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam over in Aiken. Our temperature today, as I mentioned, made it to 71 degrees, just a few degrees shy of our average of 74. Low this morning, above average at 56, so not too cold this morning. No rain recorded at Augusta Bush Field. We did have the storms come through last night and that was with a low pressure system that's now out of the area and high pressure is taking over. So clear skies for everyone. Temperatures in those low to upper 50s. 56 in Thompson and Evans, 54 in Millen, Augusta at 51 degrees, 57 in Sandersville and 53 in Edgefield. So we have high pressure over the region. Notice not a drop of rain across the southeast. But as we zoom out here, you can see that low pressure system, as I mentioned, brought us the storms last night, at least for around half the CSRA. And now it's it's bringing a lot of rainfall anywhere from Maine down to even parts of the North Carolina coastline. Now, luckily, most of that heavy rain is offshore. And for us, we won't have to worry about any rain over the next several days to come. It is going to be breezy for the next few days, including tonight. Winds are coming in from the north up to 8 miles per hour in Augusta, 10 in Sparta, 10 as well in Edgefield. And that northerly wind is bringing in some cooler air. 
For now, it's not too cold, but by tomorrow morning, once the wind settles down, we will see those temperatures fall into the upper 30s to around 40 degrees. So bundle up for your Friday morning, but you can ditch the jacket by the afternoon. We will see the 70s once again, and then eventually 80s on Easter Sunday, and we'll keep it dry until next Tuesday. So coming up, I'll have more details on our temperatures and our next chance of rain, but back to you, Jenny. All right, thank you. The This is the final day for legislation to pass in Georgia. The session marks lawmakers passing the school voucher bill, tougher penalties for fentanyl trafficking, and pay raises for teachers. They also cleared bills to lower state income taxes and make it easier to start new health care facilities. But some bills have failed, like Medicaid expansion and capping tax credits for the movie industry. Of course, we want to make sure we prioritize education, making sure we're fully funding uh, K-12 education. We want to make sure that we're giving our law enforcement personnel the raises that they deserve, our teachers the raises that they deserve as well. Uh, so those are some high points that, that we're looking for in our budget. Governor Brian Kemp is expected to address lawmakers tonight, and once a budget is ratified, he'll have 40 days to determine whether a bill will be signed into law or vetoed. Richmond County Schools preparing students for life after high school. Hatsipa High School held its career fair today for junior and seniors. Juniors and seniors. Organizers hoped to introduce students to the options they can take into their future careers. Representatives from local businesses and area colleges were on hand to talk to students. There was also voter registration for the students. Reaction tonight to news that a poultry processing plant has been observing this event for more than 20 years. Tonight, the United Way of Aiken County held its annual meeting and awards ceremony. The United Way helps provide health, education, and financial stability. The event was held to recognize community members helping to make an impact. WJBS Parkland Bishop emceed the event. The people that have been receiving awards tonight definitely are not in it for the awards. They are in it for making an impact in our community. It makes me feel great that I get to give a little bit back to those people that have worked so unwaveringly throughout throughout the campaign to make sure that we can raise enough funds to provide the funds for our partner agency. The United Way of Aiken raised over $2 million. Coming up, a local program is celebrating veterans. What the service provides when your news at 11 continues. And we are three days away until Easter Sunday. And we're also three days away until temperatures reach the 80s again. I'll have more details on that right after this break. Pull up slash commercial savings. Headlines on News Channel 6, brought to you by Jamie Casino Injury Attorneys. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live Viper 6. Welcome back. Let's start out with a school shout out. Earlier today, I went to Blue Ridge Elementary School in Evans, Georgia, and spoke with several fourth graders. I had such a great time. They were so interested in the weather. Always a really fun grade to visit with. Thank you so much, Blue Ridge, for having me. And a big shout out to Miss Laura Walker for planning this visit with me. Definitely looking forward to seeing you guys again next year. Here's a live look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam now outside the station. It's a pretty pleasant night. We're at 51 degrees. Northwest wind coming in at 8 miles per hour. Dew points are low in the upper 30s. Temperatures anywhere from around 51 in Augusta and McCormick to 56 in Sparta. 58 in Wrightsville, but warmer down towards the south. 57 in Barnwell and 55 in Allendale. Winds are coming in from the northwest, and that's bringing in some cooler air. So despite the temperatures in the 50s for now, it will be cold tomorrow morning. So you definitely need to bundle up. Upper 30s to low 40s in the forecast. 8 mile per hour winds in Augusta and 8 at 9 in Edgefield. Winds are starting to settle down with the exception of Barnwell up 14 miles per hour. But once the winds do settle down, that's when the temperatures will get pretty cold tonight. High pressure overhead, that's keeping the southeast dry. We did have the storms come through last night. If you are in our southern line counties, you may have noticed we even had some hail coming down. But for the rest of us, our northern counties were pretty much dry and dry for everyone today. There's that low pressure system bringing the rain 
mostly off the coast here of New Jersey, but a lot of widespread rain from Maine down to New England. So luckily for us, we don't have to worry about anything like that for our Friday. Plenty of sunshine, not a cloud in the sky. We'll start out at, up in the, at the 39 degree mark, but then warm up all the way to 72 by the 3 o'clock hour. And here's Easter weekend. Really can't beat it. I definitely recommend some outdoor plans. Soak up the sunshine. 78 on Saturday and then Sunday, Easter Sunday, very warm, 82 degrees, well above average. That 10-day forecast, or the high temperatures over the next seven days, I should say, showing the temperatures warming up and then eventually going back down to the low 70s later on next week. So dew points remain low, so you won't have to worry about any rain. And notice really not even any clouds with those dew points so low. But then as we go into Monday, starting to see those higher dew points, we'll see more clouds. And also the winds will be breezy over the next few days, even into Monday. Those wind gusts up to 20 to 25 miles per hour. But not much going on for now. High pressure overhead. Winds will eventually start to come in from the south, bringing in the warmer temperatures. A few cl passing clouds here and there, but for the most part, plenty of sunshine over the weekend. We'll have a front form out towards the northwest, and that'll eventually be our next rainmaker, bringing the chance of rain and storms Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. But other than that, not much rain in the forecast. Lows tonight in the upper 30s to low 40s. Highs tomorrow in the low 70s. And that 10-day forecast now showing the sunshine and the warm temperatures. Then after we have the rain next week, we'll cool back down to the lows in the 40s, highs in the low 70s. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jenna. A graduation ceremony, 9% of those found employment or decided to further their education. Still ahead, a bank account in South Carolina has state officials confused why it's raising questions about how the state handles its books. When your news at 11 continues. First, though, let's take a look at the winning numbers in tonight's South Carolina Lottery. Pick three, five, eight, one. And the pick four winning numbers tonight, zero, two, zero, one, fireball, three. Join it. I'll just show your phone and save hundreds of dollars. My dad was a farmer, and when I saw him on a horse, the guy was bigger than life. One of the things that he had a hard time doing was showing the emotion. Maybe it was because the way he was raised, or believing that men provide and they don't struggle. But we all struggle. I want to show emotion to my kids. I want them to know when I'm happy, I want them to know when I'm sad, and I want them to see me working through things. The biggest reward I get from being a dad is watching my kids accomplish a goal, watching them light up. Nothing brings a bigger smile to my face. So I make my kids a priority, whether it's getting a baseball, a dance rehearsal, you name it, I'm there. They're gonna remember that they grew up loved. Be brave. Be there every day. And allow your kids to know that it's okay to struggle. That even dad doesn't know the answer sometimes, but we're going to figure it out together. Westside High School Boys Basketball. State champions for the third straight year. You can't always choose the weather, but you can choose your weather app. Go with the most accurate and most trusted. The Live Viper 6 mobile app. Download it today. The state of South Carolina has an unusual billion-dollar money problem. The money was found, but no one knows where it came from. Shakira Speaks explains what happened. $1.8 billion is a lot of money. South Carolina state officials found it in a mystery account this week. The discovery has leaders scratching their heads about not only its source, but where it's supposed to go. It does raise several questions about what is actually going on and who is ultimately responsible. The issue is between two different state officials, State's Treasurer Curtis Loftus and Comptroller General Brian Gaines. Their offices are supposed to hold each other accountable and ensure the accuracy of the state's finances. Loftus says he invested the money in the mystery account, making nearly $200 million in interest for the state. That led to questions about why he didn't let the lawmakers know about the money. But Loftus says it's not his job to report that information. Communication broke down between the treasurer and the comptroller general. Um, and it was the comptroller general who found the $1.8 billion. Um, and, and this is an individual who has been appointed to that position just within the last year. So as part of his kind of getting up to speed, 
he's been going through the books and making sure that all the money is accounted for. And he's the one that found this this additional revenue. Gaines reported the issue to state lawmakers. Both leaders must testify before the state Senate Finance Committee about what happened. Gaines says the money isn't the issue. The issue is what was the source of the $1.8 billion and in what fund does it appropriately belong? Then that absolutely could have an effect on the budget because it means that there's a $1.8 billion basically debit coming to the state at some point in time. Governor Henry McMaster says the news doesn't inspire confidence, but he's glad no money was lost. That's a lot of money, and there's no need to, to hurry up and try to spend money. We don't know where it was supposed to go or what the purposes were supposed to be, anything else at this point. I think we need to find that out. The senator leading the investigation into the mystery money says he'll release more information about it next week. Sports is next. Hi, folks. This is morning starting at 9 on MeTV, WJBF 6.2. No further questions. Hey there, I'm Anna Christina. Coming up this week, Chef Nikia Darch joins me to prepare a duck. You heard me right. Plus a special pairing treat with Kate Wine Room. And after, Kayla Bacon joins us to chat music and perform. Happening this Friday at 12.30. Headlines on News Channel 6, brought to you by Jamie Casino Injury Attorneys. The News Channel 6 mobile app is now even better. Download it today. Now, WJBF sports coverage you can count on. The Clemson Tigers are still dancing after knocking off second seed Arizona in Los Angeles on Thursday night. Now, unfortunately, due to NCAA regulations, we can't show highlights, but the Tigers got the 77-72 win thanks to a game-high 18 points from Chase Hunter, plus 17 from P.J. Hall and 14 from Ian Shefflin. Head coach Brad Brownell, very happy he gets to keep coaching this group of guys for another round. You know, a big-time game by our guys. We got off to the great start. Arizona obviously punched back a couple times, but uh, these guys have hung in there and, and – uh, finished a game against a really good team that um, has had a really good season. So we have a lot of respect for them. But uh, today was our day. We just uh, we made enough plays to win. And uh, I'm just super happy that uh, these guys are going to get a chance to, to continue to play and we get to spend more time together. The Tigers now advance to the Elite Eight for only the second time in program history. They'll take on the winner of Bama versus North Carolina. The AJC released its list of All-State basketball players for 2024, and we have 15 local players receiving honors. Headlined by Westside's DeMarco Middleton taking Player of the Year honors for Class 2A. He helped lead the Patriots to their third straight state championship. Middleton was a part of all three state titles. His teammate, Levante Ivory, named the second team. Thompson's Daquan Young, also first team, with teammate Jakias Jones getting honorable mention. Butler's Roosevelt Brown, also in there, named second team. And on the girls' side, Michaela Boggins from Cross Creek, WJBF family member Carrie Fluellen from Josie, and Tania Williams from Swainsboro got first team. Butler's Brayla Harris and Thompson's Jada Kendrick named second team. We have a full list at WJBF.com. Well, it's like Christmas Day for baseball fans. Opening day of the Major League Baseball season, the Braves season opener against the Phillies got pushed back to Friday at 3 p.m. But opening day starter Spencer Strider talked about the team's goals for the season and coming out ready to win from the start. You know, one of those is obviously winning the World Series. It's a big goal. Um, I think that, you know, you can't just flip the switch when opening day comes and, and um, treat that definitely with spring training, nor can you flip the switch when you get to October and expect um, to be able to handle that environment. I think uh, you have to start that, that process now. Earlier this week, the Braves shown off some of the promotional giveaways for this season, including several bobbleheads and, more importantly, the new food offerings at Truist Park. Home opener is Friday, April 5th versus Arizona. Well, Thursday featured another high school baseball showcase game at SRP Park. Augusta Prep taking on Westminster, and the Cavs celebrated Senior Day pregame, honoring five members of their team. Westminster got off to a very strong start and leading 6-1 to one in the top of the fifth inning. Here's Mike Kelsey. He'll ground it to right. The first baseman can't quite get it, and it makes it into the outfield, which will bring in another run for the Wildcats. 
Then later on in the inning, Wills Pollard will send it to left to tack on one more. Westminster would go on to get the win over Augusta Prep 11-3. Still ahead, 7-Eleven coming out with an interesting new sparkling water flavor. We'll tell you all about it after the break. These channel Every day, ordinary people in the CSRA do extraordinary things to serve our community. Each month, News Channel 6 recognizes these outstanding volunteers with the Give It Your Best Award. Do you know an everyday hero who goes the extra mile to help others? Nominate them for the Giving Your Best Award by visiting WJBF.com and filling out the entry form. Sponsored by Science Co., Beatmont Augusta, Security Federal Bank, and News Channel 6. 7-Eleven is introducing a new flavor of sparkling water that has some fans skeptical. The convenience store chain says it's collaborating with Miracle Seltzer to debut a new line of sparkling waters, including one that has a hot dog flavor. Big Bite Hot Dog is meant to taste like its popular snack. The new line also includes lemon lime, green apple, and sweet orange. I don't know. Hot dog not sounding very refreshing uh, to me. I'll stick not to like the a sweet refreshing. orange. Good. Yeah, the lemon lime <laughs> sounds really good. Yeah. I. Oh man. I, it's just. It's just bad. It's just really bad. Yeah. No, thank you. Our Sunday forecast showing beautiful weather all throughout Easter weekend. We are going to warm up into the low to upper 70s Friday and Saturday, and then eventually highs in the low 80s on Sunday, and then finally some rain Tuesday night into next Wednesday. All right, that is our program, for now, everybody. We do thank you for watching. Our next news is at 4.30 with Mary Marson and John Lynn. Have a great night.